Engine Welcome to another top 5 with Crystal 5 guys. Today I will give you the 5 best performing Hearthstone decks for Legend in September. The meta is quite stable right now, so as long as we don't see any major nerfs anytime soon, the meta should remain the same. I'm gonna give you an overview of each of these 5 decks, their win rates, a mulligan guide for them, and if it's worth crafting them. But I will also give you what other good decks are out there that didn't make it into this top 5, so don't worry if you don't see your favorite one here. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, a like and subscribe would really be appreciated. Really? You can also watch some of my other in-depth guides, so you can improve as a player even more. But now, let's get into the top 5. Again, let's start off with Libram Paladin, since it's probably been the easiest way to climb to Legend with ever since Skullamance dropped. It's not a hard deck to pilot, but there are definitely a ton of small tricks you can apply that will take you over the top with it. I've been using it as my go-to deck when I need to coach somebody to Legend, and I've already done so with several dozens of people in the past few weeks. Here's just one example from last week's on-stream coaching session, where we went 9-0 for rank 3 to Legend in less than 90 minutes. You can really do wonders with it if you know what you're doing with the deck, and you can even win seemingly unwinnable games with horrible mulligans too. It's a very board-centric deck, so sticking something on the board is really crucial so you can get your game plan going. No need for me to go into detail about it again, since I already did a very in-depth guide about it not too long ago, what included coaching gameplay in it. But here are the win rates for it in the current meta. Right now, it's pretty favorable for the Libram Paladins, since the only real problematic decks for you would be Mages and sometimes Rogue. A lot of people think Bomb Warrior is a bad matchup, but if you know what you're doing, the numbers can go even above 80% win rate for you. Guardian Druids are a problem when they pop off, and Priest is not too fun either, although the current versions are not too scary. All in all, the deck is doing very good right now, and it probably will be a very good decision for you to craft this deck even today. Penflinker is also doing really good, so you can choose that one as well. Next up is Face Hunter. This deck is doing exceptionally strong right now, and the games are pretty fast with it too. It's dirt cheap, and it doesn't take you too much to pilot it pretty optimally as well, so it's definitely a top choice for climbing ranks. Usually it's pretty hard not to curve well with it, but there are quite a few things you need to think about to pilot it optimally. Saving the free hero power from your true guide, for instance, can be very rewarding, so you can cheat out your face stalker or dragon bane hero power effects a turn or two earlier, which is really strong. You can be creative with the secrets you can run in this deck, but usually this combination right now should feel best for most. You can try running Explosive Trap if you think you're gonna be facing a lot of decks that get punished by it, but nowadays most minions you would be facing would have above 3 HP, unless you're facing rogues, so most of the time Explosive Trap would be feeling underwhelming. Around the mid game, you should start running out of steam, so sometimes it would be better for you to fit in an extra hero power instead of playing the card you would have normally played, just so you have something to play next turn as well. Saving a beast would also be very rewarding for you, so you can get that extra reach from Kill Command later. Polkit is also a pretty cool card you can run in this deck instead of the Unleash the Hounds, but you can definitely run the deck without it, so don't feel pressured into crafting it if you don't want to. For the matchups, your worst ones would have their vengeance. Aggro Demon Hunter is just too fast for you, and Soul Demon Hunter heals too much and doesn't care for your secrets much either. Bomb Warriors with the Pirate Package are also trouble, since they gain a lot of armor and clear your small white boards easily. And Secret Row can be a problem too, but if you're not seeing too many of those, then climbing should be smooth. For the Mulligan, the one drops you're looking for are Interpit, Initiate, Sharpshooter and Demonic Companion. Tour Guide is also a great keep, but usually you would be looking to pair it up with a Face Stalker or Dragon Bane, since it's not a great one-drop minion on its own. Scavenger's Ingenuity is also pretty great, since you can get fat face stalkers or fat bunnies. Adorable Infestation also feels great, but it's even greater when you can pair it up with a good one drop. Never keep secrets, Voracious Reader, Unleash the Hounds, and Kill Commands. Animal Companion is also not a great keep, but it's fine I guess if you're curving into it. The deck is really strong and really cheap, so if it's the easy legend that you're looking for, then Hunter would deliver. Kylander Hunter is also pretty strong right now, even though it's not as popular anymore, but anything else Hunter related would not be very optimal in the current meta. Moving down to Bound Warrior, which has also been a staple in the Skullamass meta since day 1. Not much has changed since the last top 5 I featured it in 4 weeks ago, and it's literally the exact same list right now. Really? Anyway, the deck is doing really great, and it's not too hard to pilot either. The game plan is to shuffle a ton of bombs in your opponent's deck while you stall out the game with your huge arsenal of board clears. 
You have to be smart about how and when you use those though. Figure out what deck your opponent is playing and what threats you should be expecting from him. And that will help you greatly in figuring out which removal to use when. We are running two Horde Pillagers here and those would help you even against the luckiest of Ooze players. As long as you're not too unlucky with the draws, you should never stop swinging with this deck. We have Galakron for that extra damage in the late game and he more often than not draws you a good minion too. Drawing an 8-8 cross enough from him feels pretty amazing and you can also somewhat reliably draw your Blastmaster Boom with it too, so you can close out the game faster. Some lists do opt to cut out Kronks out of it, but it's up to you. Keep in mind that it's a good idea to hero power whenever you can, especially if you're not under pressure, cause in the end of the day it's free health, so sometimes it might be a better idea for you to play slightly off curve, so you can play your hero power this turn and next turn you can play whatever you want it with another hero power instead. For the matchups, if you're seeing too many aggro decks like Demon Hunter, Face Hunter and Weapon and Stealth Rogue, you will not be too happy, but anything else looks pretty good. For the mulligan, you always want to keep a Corsair cache, but if you didn't get any of those, keeping a wrench caliber is not wrong as well. Keeping cards like Sword and Board, Portmaster, Bladestorm and even Baroth could be very good for you. And depending on the matchup and your hand, you can even consider keeping Shield Block and even Crossed Enough or Cutting Class. It's a deck definitely worth crafting if you enjoy the playstyle. It's not a cheap deck, but it definitely proved itself as a strong deck and I do believe it's gonna remain strong even after the new expansions drop, so you can consider it as a long-term investment. Other than that, Big Warrior and Skipper Bomb Warrior are also doing pretty good. Guardian Druid is still going strong as well. In the last top 5 we talked about a Kael'thas version, so in this top 5 let's talk about a Mount Cellar version which is doing good if not even gooder. This deck only runs one survival of the fittest since it can't really cheat it out and it finds room for one crystal power, which is a great way to cycle beasts with the seller. The beasts here are only 5, so we're running only one teacher's pet here since the other two are just too good with the board clear and the card cycle. Again, we have two brooms here which can be used in many different ways with your mount sellers, beasts and Isera dragons. For the matchups, Kael'thas Guardian Druid would have an edge over you, but the real problem would be Bomb Warriors and Tortolan Mages. Face Hunter isn't too easy either and Librem Paladin is close, but all in all you should be good. For the Mulligan, Overgrowth, Wildgrowth and Guardian Animals are top. Lightning Bloom and Nature Studies are also pretty good and you can keep Crystal Power against some matchups too, but anything else feels less than optimal. Innervate can also be a good keep if you already have a good game plan going in your head, but if that's not the case then it's probably better to be greedier than that. This is another great deck you can craft and it's not expensive at all, so you should definitely feel good about crafting it. There are all kinds of other Guardian Druids and Malagos versions out there which are also doing pretty fine, so feel free to switch it up if you get bored. And the last deck on this top 5 is again gonna be a Soul Demon Hunter. Last time I did show you a great list without Mac Teradon, but this time let me show you one with the big boy included. This deck rose in popularity quite a lot and it's doing great for most. The game plans feels very similar to the one with the Bomb Warrior, cause in the early game you just want to survive and you want to reach your mid game where things really start to get interesting. Again, you have plenty of tools to remove early game threats with, but what the deck does lack is removal for big minions and big boards. Macteradon is usually your only reliable way to remove big things, but you can also combo a few cards into a huge blade dance as well. There is room for one wand maker in this version too, so that usually means an extra twin slice or an extra mana burn or an extra consume magic. In the mid game is where you can pop off with tons of damage and you can heal a lot if you found your warblades too. If you've already done Skull of Gul'dan, you can even pop off with more than 15 damage on the turn after, so you can take your opponent by surprise. For the matchups, your worst one would be Druids and Librem Paladins, since like I said, you're not great against big targets. The good news is you're great against face hunters and bomb warriors and mages, so all in all the climb shouldn't be too hard. For the mulligan, you would want your Jailers and Pantras pretty much always. Shear is also a pretty good keep and if you're expecting wide big boards, you can also keep your free damage AoE and a blade dance can help you out as well. If you're against aggro, you can keep a warblade so you can get yourself a few extra turns. Wandmaker is also not a bad keep and Chaos Strike as well. This is another very affordable deck, so feel free to throw your dust in that direction. Aggro Demon Hunter is also doing quite alright if you prefer to take a more straightforward approach. 
Other great working decks right now would be Small Spell Mage and Tortolan Mage, Weapon Rogue, Secret Rogue, Stealth Rogue and even Galakrond Rogue, Totem Shaman, Galakrond Warlock, Galakrond Priest or Steel Priest, Aggro Demon Hunter, Highlander Hunter, Big Warrior, Risky Skipper Bomb Warrior, Malagos Druid and Panflinger Paladin. So that's gonna be it for this video guys, hope this helps you pick the best deck for your climb to legend and if it did, a like and a subscribe would be amazing. Thanks for watching, I'm Crystal5 and I'll see you in my next video or stream.